for the remainder of the year. This message will not be a message of empty celebration and blind sentimentality, but it will be a thought-provoking message, a message that will call us to action to fulfill the dream of the late Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Dr. Tushala is not going to tell us anything or challenge us to do anything that he has not done or he is not doing himself. That's the mark of a good leader. His life has been a commitment of activism and service to his people. I would like to take the time out to thank the Martin Luther King Committee for sharing Dr. Obama to shop us so graciously with the community. Because the Martin Luther King Committee brought Dr. Shaka to Shaka to Broward County, and because the Martin Luther King Committee networked with other organizations like the NAACP and Dean Burke's book, Dr. Shaka, Dr. Shaka has been circulated in the community since Saturday. And I want to thank personally Moselle Battle and Bridget Kurtz for coordinating those efforts with us for being so selfless and so unselfish in sharing your resources. Dr. Tashaka has definitely been carrying out the mission of Dr. King since he's been here. On Saturday, he conducted an all-day workshop at the Old Dillon High School Museum on leadership, strategizing, and organizing for effective change. We had over 60 people, probably over 65 people in attendance at that workshop. And it was an excellent workshop. He made an impromptu, almost an emergency guest appearance at Tiny Grove First Baptist Church on yesterday to teach their class on African American history. He also lectured at GM Birch Book yesterday afternoon and will introduce over WRBD. And all of these presentations were over an hour long, and the brother did not repeat himself not once. That's the genius of the man that's about to come before you. The brother is headed, and he's been working very hard since he's been here. And it's been good, and we need the spirit that he is bringing to Broward County the spirit of activism. We need that in order to help us to bring some clarity, unity, and consolidation to some of the issues and the things that are happening here in our community. Let me just tell you how heavy this brother is. He's a full professor at San Francisco State University, where he serves as the chair of the Black Studies Department. He has expertise in the areas of ancient African history, African American history, African philosophy, and black political theory. He holds a PhD in education from Western Institute for Social Research. Dr. Tashaka is a prolific writer, and his published works have appeared in many respected periodicals and journals. He is the author of books entitled The Political Legacy of Malcolm X and The Art of Leadership, Volume 1. Volume 2 will be out in March of this year. And both of these books are available for purchase at the table to my left over here. You can purchase them after the program. Dr. Sushant's activism in the Black Freedom Movement spans over 30 years. He has established a long list of impressive accomplishments and contributions, including that of being a renowned lecturer and a workshop facilitator. Currently, Dr. Tashaka serves as an educational consultant to the National Urban League and the Episcopal Church. Let us give Dr. Omar Tashaka a thunderous applause as we bring him to the podium.
And you know, St. Augustine taught these same teachings that were the early Christian teachings. He said that inside man and woman, there were two cities. He said that there was a city of the lower self, the city of hatred and lies and deceit, and there was a city of God. And he said the purpose of the life was for man and woman to rise from the lower city to the higher city. And I'm telling you, when black folks came to America, we carry this idea that God dwelled inside of us. Isn't that true? Yeah. You see, there was a time when black folks had to work from can see to can see. Got whipped if we did wrong or if we didn't do anything wrong. Went to the fields without food to eat. And the one thing that we had to console us was a belief that there was a God who practiced truth, that believed in justice, and this made it possible for us to move on. And King said this. He said his God was a personal God. King said in times of loneliness, his God gave him comfort. In times of fear, his God gave him courage. So you see, when you talk about fear, you've got to talk about this radical ministry. And you know something else? Martin Luther King came out of a radical ministry that was based on an idea that flowed through Christianity that came out of ancient Egypt. And this idea was that a man or a woman in life should have a mission in life. I want you to hear this, because this was key to King's thing. I want to tell you something. You can be 30 years old, 6 foot 7, muscular, weigh 250 pounds, you can play for the 49ers, or you can get in a ringing box, but if you don't have a mission in life, you're a 21 or a 31 year old male, but you're not a man. You can be a grown up female as fine as you can possibly be, but your whole realm of existence is the physical realm that you are a female, but you're not a woman. This ancient system, and this is real profound knowledge for you, it said, man and woman, before you know anything else, know yourself. It said that all knowledge starts with self-knowledge. If you think about it, we have black folks with PhDs, DDs, and all kinds of D degrees. <laughs> We have nuclear physicists, astrophysicists, doctors, lawyers, mathematicians. We don't have enough of these. We need more of these scientific and technological skills. And I want to say to you young people that if you can sing with the soul that you can sing, music is mathematical. You hear me? Nothing is higher in the mathematical world than music. And if you get down into some math, the way you get down into the soul of the black folk, you will create a new man. But you see, a lot of us who are experts in all this knowledge, we end up being educated fools because we were not educated in knowledge itself. We know everything about the Greeks and the Romans, but we don't know anything about the Egyptian or the Ethiopian. The commanders of the knowledge. And you see, this is because King said this. See, a lot of us don't read King. We should read him. He said, slavery is still in the minds of black folks an inferiority complex, where we believe that we will less than other people. You know, I read the slave narrative, and one of them slaves said, born a savage in Africa, civilized in America. You know, there was a great Western historian who said, he was talking about civilization. He said, America is the only society that moved from barbarism to savagery without ever experiencing civilization. You know why he said it? Civilization is the kind of car you drive. Civilization is the kind of house you live in. Civilization is whether you have central heating. Civilization is whether or not you treat your fellow brother or sister with kindness and respect. And you see, 
white folks started digging in the ground. And they started finding skulls. They found the skull in Africa four million years old. No skull anywhere in the world of a human being is old. And then, listen to this, they found the skeleton of a beautiful black woman who they called Lucy, who dated back to three and a half million years ago. You know what I'm telling you? Huh? So far from telling your children that they accomplished nothing on the tree of civilization, you have to say to your children that God was gracious enough to the black man and black woman to give to the world the most precious gift you could possibly give human life.
But if you say Kenya is last year, we wrote a book, uh, Community of Chaos, Where Do We Go From Here? And in this book, King said, you can't blame black poverty on the inferiority of black people. You can't blame miseducation on the ignorance of black people. He says the way the country is structured, I'm spoken to him, and this is something you can learn from, because when you hear King's dream, you don't hear this. What did he mean when he said it was in the structure of the country? What he meant was that this economy is structured so there's always people out there. And it's structured so the majority of those people are black and brown and red people. You understand? So King was saying, you've got to change the structure if there's going to be justice. You see, the Bible says a people without vision perish. The worst thing that happened in slavery was that some of us lost the ability to dream. But King was a dreamer who brought his dreams down to earth and brought them into reality. So brothers and sisters, Malcolm also said the same thing. Malcolm was called for late times. He said that a chicken was no more designed to produce a duck egg than America is designed to produce fruit. And now he said, he said if a chicken to produce a duck egg, that would be a revolutionary thing. And he said, true enough, if America could produce freedom, then America would be a revolutionary thing. So I'm here to tell you that if you want freedom, if you want justice, if you want equality, we have to begin to conceive of a better society where every black child, every brown child, every red and yellow, and every white child can fulfill the maximum of their potential. They can be what the Creator made them to be. Finally, and in conclusion, brothers and sisters, we have to ask ourselves this. We are here to honor King. What is it we need to do now to see that this is not just a field for session and that we don't begin to carry these things out through the rest of the year? And I say this to you. The first thing is this. There was a time when we had more unity in our community. There was a time when our churches and our families were stronger. You see, we have a whole variety of I don't care whether it's in San Francisco or Oakland or Fort Lauderdale, Florida, we have a task to recreate a sense of African and African American community good. I want you to hear this. Let me explain what that means. See, when blacks moved out of the South, and you know, we thought we were moving to a land of milk and honey. We moved up north. And we moved off the plantation and moved into the cities like Fort Lauderdale. We thought we had arrived. Some people said there was gold in the street. And then we found out that the only difference between racism in California and racism in Mississippi is that when they denied you a job in California, it was with a California accident. And when they denied you one in Mississippi, it was with a Mississippi accident. And you see, it was a time our communities were whole because we had an idea that the whole black 
have to do. And I want you to listen real careful because I don't want you to misinterpret this. The worst thing that happens to black folks in America was slavery. But I'm here to tell you something. The Civil Rights Movement was not fought for integration. It was fought for desegregation. It was fought to end segregation. But black folks did not fight to be white. They fought, they fought to have pride. They fought to have equal access to all the opportunities in this society. And I'm here to tell you that the next worst thing that's happened to black people since slavery has been integration.
Thank you. 